Hi everyone, welcome to West Coast Muscle Saws. I'm just doing a little cleanup work on my partner chainsaw. It's a unique one. Get over here so I can take a peek at it. Had this in my collection for many years. Just a great saw. Some of the Swedish engineering there. But that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is, uh, you know, the chainsaws. But uh, they're used for more than just for cutting firewood. And what I'm going to show you today is uh, one that I had hooked up for one of my customers, Karen. She does recovery work. And on the North Umpqua, a little ways from us here, one of the uh, resorts up there during the flood, during the middle of winter, got their water line completely washed out, washed across the North Umpqua River. And if you've ever been on the North Umpqua River, it can get pretty, pretty violent. A lot of water rushing down there. And so she come and talked to me and we discussed it and, I, and we decided, well, let's try the Lewis Winch, shoot a arrow across the river there with a rope onto it, hook onto the cable, get the cable across and see if we can yard that across there rather than doing all kinds of other things. So anyway, let me set this back and we'll talk about that. I'm setting on a piece of uh, carpet here. It's not on the cement. Never set your power saws on cement. They will deteriorate. This is the video here. If you go to the Chainsaw Guy on YouTube, that's my site there, my channel, you'll see uh, you'll see a lot of different videos. I've shot a lot of videos. And this is the one of Karen doing the... Uh, I'm going to do this. I got the volume down. But anyway, <clears throat> what they're doing there, they got the Lewis Winch with a steel chainsaw I had hooked up to it. And uh, they've got it already across the river, and the river's still pretty high. And she's got that cable hooked up to that big water line. The water line was really heavy. It was a very long water line, several hundred feet. And there you are, you get across the North Umpire River. You can see it across there. A lot of, a lot of big water. Hey, if you want a good shot of that, just go to my channel, Chainsaw Guy, and you can see that. I've shot a lot of different videos on loose winches. I knew Fred Lewis, the guy that uh, actually invented this winch. Uh, I uh, got to meet him and uh, we discussed winches and, and everything. And I sold a lot of his winches, worked on a lot of his winches. But the question I had uh, today was, is leakage of oil on a Lewis winch? And I had to tell the customer it's very common. That's the way it was designed. They do leak, weep oil, and I'll show you where they, where they leak and weep and what you can do to take care of that. Fred's no longer with us, of course, and <clears throat> Lewis Winch has changed hands a couple times. Still out there. You still buy them. Very handy tool. Uh, real heavy duty. You get the big cable. Turn that off so we can mute it there. Anyway, the Lewis Winch, if you want to check the oil level, there's one way to do it. The way you check the, the oil level on, on a, well, <clears throat> on the older winches, it's similar. They have to be vented. They create pressure in there with the gears turning and the oil in there. They create pressure. If you block it off completely, you're going to have all kinds of issues. It's going to really push oil out. The old Lewis winches, actually, when they were shipped to us, they came with a little screw, a real small screw in the little hole, and we didn't know what it was for until I talked to Fred, and that's just for shipping to keep help keep the unit from leaking and when you get it you take it off and you should never turn the winch over flip it flip the winch around or anything it always should be setting level on the ground or in your pickup you don't want to have it sitting on its side or upside down it will weep oil out almost all the Lewis winches hold five ounces of 80 90 weight oil that's the only oil they recommend on it and it works well it's not much oil you don't want to overfill it because when you overfill it in the reservoir, you will get some, a lot of leakage. And of course you don't want that. Of course you don't want it to run dry. And the way you, the newer winches, which have been around for probably the last 20 years, the way you uh, check the level is you set that winch on its nose with the spool down. You don't have to take the, the cable off or anything. You can still leave it hooked up to the chainsaw if you want. It's a little awkward. 
But you're gonna stand it on stand it on its nose, nose being the spool on a bench. You're gonna take the fill plug out. You're gonna leave it in that upright position, standing on its nose. And you're gonna take your pinky, and you're gonna stick it in that hole. And you're gonna rotate, move that, just wiggle that winch a little bit, and you should get a little bit of oil on your pinky. That is the standard procedure for checking the oil level. If you don't feel, if you don't feel any oil then you need to I would drain it out this it's awkward you've got to drain it you don't have to you don't have a big drain plug on these I would turn it over you know it's easier to deal with if you got the chainsaw off of the, the unit and let it drain maybe overnight in a oil container a little uh, reservoir to catch it a little bucket or whatever then I would fill it with uh, the five ounces measure it put five ounces in there do the test on it again, and you'll see what we're talking about when you can just reach in there and just barely touch the oil, and you're good. A lot of guys didn't uh, don't want to do this. They think that thing should just seal up 100%. It's never going to happen. When they build these, let me show you here. This one's the IPL. And I've had a lot of these. I don't know how many of these I've had apart and repaired. They do get damaged. Overuse, over overweight, too much weight. <laughs> There's the little sprocket that drives the little chain over here, which drives this sprocket, which turns the spool, which spools up your cable. The bearing, it's not like if you're a chainsaw guy, it's not like what you see in chainsaws. It's got a really nice oil. <coughs> seal with the lips and with the spring to hold it you're not going to see it on this you're and you can see if you can see in there the shaft slides right through that bearing and there is nothing against that shaft on a chainsaw you know you've got the lips against the shaft and that seals it and keeps everything airtight and vacuum tight there's no oil of course other than the mixture and the chainsaw and the crankcase but that's a different story but anyway, what I'm saying is, is the oil can't even weep. If you look at where it's leaking, if you pressurize this, you can do that. You can pressurize this and see where the leaking is. It'll leak everywhere when you pressurize it. It can weep right out of that shaft there. Or if this, and all this is, is a basically a dust shield. It's not a real oil seal on that bearing. It's just, just a dust seal. And a lot, most guys take them out. You should leave it in on this. It does help. But there's no real high-end seal on that, and so yes, they do weep oil. You're gonna, you're, it's gonna happen. If you got a Lewis winch, you turn it upside down or on the side, you're gonna probably see some oil. So it's not a big worry. Uh, what I tell my customers is before you go out using it for the moving the logs, or if you're uh, go use it for hunting, do the nose down or the uh, stand it on its nose. <clears throat> do that. It's real easy to do. Pull the plug, check for the oil of your finger. Now, that's great and everything. What about the old ones? The old ones didn't have that fill plug. They had a very, very small little hole, small plug. You should drain it. What I would do is drain it, take, what you, take the little plug out, let it sit overnight, drain it bone dry, and then fill it with the same five ounces of the 80, 90 oil and... Uh, Leave it upright, leave the unit set and flat, transporting it. Not too big a concern when you're using it. If it were to tip a little bit when you're winching your logs, your elk, whatever you're doing with it, rocks, they're used for everything. Try to keep it upright as best you can. You'll probably see, maybe see a little seepage. Not so much in operation as when it gets tilted on the side and left for some time. It's not just pouring out oil. It's what we call weeping in the industry, weeping some oil. And so do all that and you should be fine. Now, a lot of guys don't want to mess with all that. They, they still don't want to have that little seeping oil possibly get on their garage floor or whatever. A lot of guys will take the unit apart, pack it with some good lithium grease, and then also pump it in that fill plug with lithium grease. I've done that for a couple of guys. They wanted, uh, wanted that done. It seemed to work fine. I mean... Um, Works good, works good. 
you will still see some weepage of the grease. You know how what it does when it gets warm. It will weep a little bit. So that's just some ideas. That's just what I ran into with these. A uh, lot of videos on the Chainsaw Guys channel uh, as far as the winch, chainsaws, all kinds of, I don't know. There's, I think, 3,500 videos there. So if you want to check into that, go right ahead. And uh, I'm going to get out of here. i got some other saws I want to just do a little maintenance on. So if you got any questions, you know how to get the chainsaw guy. Uh, saw King at SawKing at Hotmail.com. And uh, try to answer your questions. Have a great week.